Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is so exciting because I'm hosting a open collab. It is a Thanksgiving themed side dish or dessert, whatever your favorite side dish or dessert is. So we have got a nice group of ladies here on YouTube that have joined in on this collab and I'm so excited. Of course, there will be a playlist linked down below. So make sure y'all go and check out the playlist link when you're done with my video. Go give all those ladies some love. Make sure you subscribe, you like their videos, you comment, give them all of the love, everything they need. A lot of them have been on YouTube a while and some of them are new YouTubers. So just spread the joy, spread the love. We definitely need it right now. This world is crazy. Um, but for today, today's video, I have got some baked mac and cheese and I also have a no baked banana eclair cake. So I hope y'all enjoy this video and let's go ahead and get started. Here is a few of the ingredients that you're gonna need. We will need some crackers and some butter for the topping. Some seasonings, salt, salt, pepper, paprika, and garlic powder. And then for the cheese mixture, you will need milk, a can of cream of cheddar soup, some Velveeta, and then of course, some elbow macaroni. Okay y'all, so I just have a pot of water on the stove and it is coming to a boil. It is very important to salt your water whenever you are cooking any kind of pasta. Um, this is the only time that you get to season your pasta. So it's very important to put salt in it and you want to use quite a bit. You want it to literally, if you can like stick your finger in it and taste it, you want, to be, want it to be able to taste like salt water from the ocean. If that helps, uh, if that helps you with knowing how much salt to use. Um, I learned this in culinary school and so I always add a nice amount of salt. If you let it come, um, let it heat up a little bit and then add it, um, it doesn't just go straight down to the bottom. But of course you're gonna be stirring it when you add the pasta in. So it'll be good to go anyways and it'll just dissolve into the water. So now that my water is coming to a boil, I've got two cups of elbow macaroni. I'm just gonna dump it in. Give it a good stir. And then we're gonna let this cook till almost done. You still want it to have a tiny bite to it because remember, you're gonna finish it off in the oven you're gonna bake bake it and marry the cheese and the noodles together with the breading on top and it's gonna be delicious. In my saucepan, I'm just adding in half of this block of Velveeta. I added in the one can of the cheddar soup. And then I'm going to add in some milk. 
And then we're just gonna heat this up um, over medium to low heat. You just want it to be all melted together. And then we will go in with some of our seasonings. And then we will marry these two together. So I'm going to start out with one can of milk. And then we're just going to put this on the stove and get it all melted together. Okay, so I've got the sauce all nice and melted. I added in some pepper. I added in some paprika. And then I added in some garlic. That's all the taste. And I'll have this full recipe linked in the description box below through saffron. So we're just going to dump this over. Yum. Now you want it to be extra saucy, so don't worry if you think it's too much, it's not, I promise, because you're going to bake it and it's going to soak into that pasta. And it's going to make a nice creamy baked mac and cheese. Look at that, y'all. Oh my gosh. I cannot even. <laughs> Okay, so I just have my greased casserole dish here, and I'm just going to dump this all in here. Now, of course, um, you can adjust this recipe based on the number of people, since it is for Thanksgiving. Um, depending on how many people you have, you probably need to double or triple. Which I know this year is going to be a little different for most families because of the virus. People can't get together like normal. But you just adjust the recipe based on your crowd. So now for the topping, I like to keep it simple and just do um, the Ritz butter crackers with some melted butter. And then put it on top. Okay, so I've just got three tablespoons of butter that I've melted. And then I've got a sleeve of crushed, crushed crackers. And I'll just mix those well in that butter. And we're just going to go in with a nice, even coating on top.
I have my oven preheated at 350. We're gonna pop this in the oven for about 25 to 30 minutes. Okay, y'all, we're gonna go ahead and get started on the second recipe. This one is a sweet treat recipe. This is a no-bake chocolate banana eclair cake. Y'all, it has been so long since I've had this, but I have really honestly been craving it. Luke's not a huge fan of bananas, but I'm making it anyways. And I felt like this would be perfect for this video because it's so good and it's delicious. Um, so here is a couple of things you're gonna need. You will need whatever brand chocolate frosting, just one can. That's gonna be for the delicious fudgy top. You'll need two eight ounce things of Cool Whip. Um, for the pudding, you can use two French vanilla or two banana, but I like to do one of each. I don't, I don't know, I like the slight banana flavor you get from the, just doing the one, and then when you mix it with the French vanilla, it's just, it's really good if you do one box each, but you're going to need two boxes total, and like I said, you can do two banana or you can do two French vanilla, that's totally up to you. You're gonna need some graham crackers. Normally I just get the regular ones, um, but Luke went to the store for me. He got the honey ones, but that's totally fine. You're gonna need milk, of course, for your pudding. And then you will need some bananas. And that's it, y'all. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I do have the dishwasher going, so I do apologize for that, but I hope y'all can still hear me. I'm gonna try to talk as loud as I can. Um, so I'm just going to mix both of these puddings together. Um, and I'm gonna use the one that it says pudding tarts. So I want it to, cause I want it to be a thicker consistency. Um, so this only calls for one cup of cold milk. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take and dump both of these in here. electric mixer until it's smooth. Okay, so now that I got that all mixed up, I'm just going to go ahead and fold in one of these Cool Whip things. Cool Whip containers. mixed together. We're going to put that to the side. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and start assembling. So for the first layer of this, you're going to put down one layer of the graham crackers. However, you can fit a good solid layer in there. Now we're gonna go in with some of this pudding Cool Whip mixture here. 
we're going to do two layers. So you're going to divide it in half. Make sure that you have enough for each layer. see that. I made a mess. It's definitely not me in the kitchen without making a mess. Okay, so that looks about half. So I'm just going to kind of spread it lightly. Those graham crackers are going to move on you. So now you're going to go in with banana. You can use as little or as much as you would like. Look, only um, picked up three bananas, so I'm just going to make these three bananas work, but I would probably do like two bananas per layer. So I'm just going to do one and a half. But like I said, you, you can add however much you want on the banana. Then we're going to go in with half of this Cool Whip and we're going to do a Cool Whip layer. And then you're just going to repeat. I 
another full layer. Until it's all gone. So now that I got that done, we're going to take and top it off with some more graham crackers and then we're going to pour the chocolate on top. So now that that top layer is done, I'm just going to take and put this in the microwave until it gets nice and melted. Make sure you take the foil wrapper off. <laughs> just uh, nuke it for like 30 second increments until it is nice and melted. Okay, so as you see, it is nice and melted. So now we're just going to pour this on top. Nice and even. Now ideally to take it to Thanksgiving, um, I put it in a foil pan. And I thought we had some, 
but we're out. So that's why I'm just doing it in this. So of course in a foil pan, um, if you get like a deeper one, you're gonna have um, taller edges. Um, so you don't have to worry about like the chocolate overflowing and all that. So, um, but we're gonna make it work for this. But I'll definitely recommend doing it in a higher pan because you want to try to get as much chocolatey goodness on top as you can without it overflowing. So normally I do use the whole um, container, but as you see, there's a little bit left. So, but so now what you're gonna do is you're gonna wrap it up and you're gonna put it in the fridge. You can do it overnight. You can do it for four to five hours. Um, you just want it all to settle. And I really enjoy how the graham cracker gets kind of soggy a little bit. Um, but it is so delicious. So we'll come back in a few hours whenever we're ready to eat it and I will cut it for you guys and y'all can see how delicious it looks inside. Here's what it looks like when it's done. It is so delicious. I cannot wait to eat this. And that is it, y'all. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed the baked mac and cheese and this no-bake banana eclair cake. If you try either one of these recipes, please let me know, know down below. And also, I would love to know your favorite side dish or dessert that you make for every Thanksgiving or any holiday. Um, we love all food around here, you know that, but baked mac and cheese is definitely one of our favorites around here. Don't forget that this video was a open collab, so I will have the playlist link in the description box below so y'all can go over and check out all the lovely ladies, and I will see y'all in the next video. Bye, y'all.